Harris Church in Tingsboro, Massachusetts, 1755. Actually, that's not the right date, and I'm going to tell you why. It appears to have all started December 24, 1753, not 1755, when Ebenezer Shriver, Ebenezer Kimball, and Samuel Cummings announced to the town that they were going to build this wonderful, wonderful meeting house in the first parish of, was Dunstable, now Tingsboro, Massachusetts. This meeting house was to be situated on a grassy knoll on the north side of the road, which runs in front of the church, near the Tingsboro Bridge. It's also supposed to be situated at a crossroad point of the center of travel, right near Ebenezer Butterfield's house and Robert Blood's house. It was to be situated 34 poles before the center line of travel. Now a pole in surveying terms is, let me see, 16 and a half feet to every rod. They're calling it a pole, it's a rod. Um, so if you add it all up, it's 552 feet to the center line of travel right behind us at the Teensboro Bridge to the center part of this church, which we're sitting in right now. Now there are rumors of ghosts in this church. People hear noises. They don't understand where they're coming from. Well, let me give you a little bit of a hint as to where they're coming from. When this building was being framed, in 1754, a gentleman named Abel Richardson fell to his death from the top rafters of the framing. He hit his head, and in the history books in the archive department, they say he dashed his head in. Those are the exact words. I'm sure his spirit's still here. There is another spirit associated with this meeting house church, and it is the voice and the sensation of a child. Well, there's good reason for that one, too, because in the cost of doing business to build this church, which cost at that time 24 pounds, 43 shillings, and 2 pence, probably equal of around $34 or something uh, back then, they also had to give one slave. What they gave was a very small boy of 5 years old who was healthy and conscious and free of disease on his body. They gave to a Mr. Abbott to protect and take care of for having this church built. Of course, we never do that nowadays, but that was customary at the time. They had many ministers here, and in the beginning, what they did was they chose the deacons to speak at their services. And the deacons were the people that had the most money in town. So the list went like this. Joseph Spalding Jr., John Swallow, Timothy Red, Samuel Cummings, and Joseph Parkhurst. What I find extremely interesting about this is these self-proclaimed ministers, <laughs> the wealthy guys in town, were actually paid to do the sermons on top of it. Money begets money, I guess. What I'd like to do at this time, in broad daylight, something I did just the other day. I did an EVP here in the church and I asked for a response. What I got was a sneeze. Let me play that for you right now. They're very, uh, the ones that we count were like blisters. Yes. Blisters. Okay, it was also cold. Right. I figured out why there was a sneeze. Because in church you didn't talk. You only obeyed and you recited Bible verses and you sang hymns. So to make a sound of a voice, that wouldn't happen. But a sneeze, a cough, a bang, those things would be acceptable. And right on cue, we did get that sneeze you just heard. My experiment now, I'm going to dedicate to Deborah Perkins up in Maine. And Deborah, hi, how you doing? <laughs> Deborah's a really nice girl. She told me the other day, why don't you, while you're in the church, sing a hymn or recite a prayer. Stop part of the way and see what's picked up on the recorder. Does the parish or the congregation finish your thought on tape? Hey, it's worth a shot, so why don't we figure it out? I'm going to recite part of the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to play it back. And I'm going to stop part of the way through. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in. Let's see what we've got. something but I don't know if it's like the, the like the vibrations of like the uh, echoing in here or something so uh, I'm gonna play it back one more time and this time I will crank the volume up and we'll see what we hear tonight and we're going to do a very brief investigation and let's see if we can contact the gentleman Abel Richardson who fell to his death and also the slave boy that was here. There's also a side story. Abbott who took the slave in was a real paranoid dude <laughs> and one time Abbott was really sick and he had a medicine man part of the Pentecost Federation over here on the Merrimack River. I think it would be the Abenaki tribe. The medicine man came down to give him some uh, medicine. So Abbott was so uh, paranoid that he gave it to the five-year-old boy, and it killed the child. Wow. <laughs> See you tonight. Ghosts and Legends of the Merrimack Valley. In bookstores now, hunt yourself down a copy or go to historypress.net. We're here on the stairs to the steeple, and what we're gonna do now is go to the top where the steeple is, and we're gonna do a ghost box session. And I'm gonna tell you all about the ghost box when we get there. There are nails up here, so we have to duck really low. Big nails coming through. Now, up here, this is a good spot for the ghost box. Now, a ghost box is nothing near a little AM FM radio, and you take off the back and you tweak it, and it causes AM or FM stations to switch rapidly and it creates static electricity, white noise. Let's see if we can contact Abel Richardson. He's the gentleman who fell to his death right up here in the rafters, where I'm not going to go because there's no flooring. So, isn't that something? Can, let's get this going. That's an AM frequency. 
is not much frequency. Let's turn it to FM. For many, not just women, but much better. Let's see if we can make contact. Abel Richardson, are you here with us? Zero. Abel Richardson, are you here? Cameron. Are there any spirits here? How many spirits are here today? I thought I heard nine. How many spirits are here? Number. I'm hearing stuff like that too. How many spirits are here? Is the child slave here? Maybe. Do you have something you want to tell me? Oh, like you said, not today. I thought I heard not today as well. Let's get the frequency going the opposite direction. This Abel Richardson, can you please say something? Heard late. I heard late or later. Do you want to talk to me later? He does. See, this is the beauty about instant findings. You know, because you can hear it. You don't put it in a sound program. It is either here or it's not here. Can you see me? Can you see me? I've been here before. Do you know my name? Can you say my name? One more time. Abel Richardson, are you here? And I'm going to conclude this session of the ghost box. And what I'd like to do is to go downstairs and uh, use my paranormal equipment to do an investigation in the sanctuary of the church. Be really careful going down here, okay? Keep your head ducked, all right? Because of these, uh, yeah, these things know. are just not not too friendly, all right? Be real careful. Okay. I, mean, I feel dizzy just looking at it. We'll yeah. Just get the equipment, and I think. If you go in the sanctuary, tell me what you think as far as light. And if we can do it, we'll just get it done now. We don't have to film this at all. Okay, now we're entering the sanctuary. This is a sanctuary where we got the sneeze on the EVP during the day, and also the EVP of some gentleman singing and finishing the hymn that I uh, did earlier today. What I'd like to do is start off by doing a couple of photographs. I'm going to sit down. Take some pictures.
see anything. Okay. I also want to do a little bit of temperature readings here. I have a really neat gadget to show you. It's what you'd call is compact. And it tells the temperature. You can stick it on your necklace, you can stick it like on your glove, bracelet. The only thing I don't really care for is it doesn't have a light, so you need a flashlight to, to get the temperature. chilly in here so we're looking at about 60 degrees. I didn't really see much. Little up and down. I like to see five degrees one way or the other then I start snapping pictures. No, not, not really anything here. Not at all. Okay, we'll conclude that one. Um, chart EMF meter. Electric magnetic field meter. And what we're trying to do is look for electrical patterns in the atmosphere that may fluctuate. Doesn't mean you have a ghost, just means they're fluctuating and where we are tracking energy that remains, we might find something. Will it pick up my battery? Nope. I'm going to take it up to the pulpit. That's where I got the EVP. So we have anything here. try at this point is a candle test that I like to do where we're in church maybe we could get the spirits to communicate to us via the candle Wow, that's weird. Candle won't light. Won't even light. Wow. It's got a long enough wick. Okay, now it's lighting. Hmm. That was weird. Again, with this test, you don't want to do it near an open door. You don't want to breathe on it. You don't want to do it near a drafty window. We have to use common sense at all times. Let's see if we can contact. Abel Richardson. Are you here? If you are, please pass your energy in front of this candle and make it flicker. Did you see that? I did, thought I heard some noises too. I thought I did too. Abel Richardson, once again I call upon you. Can you please make the flame flicker? You're seeing this, right? Holding my breath, and I'm looking. I know I'm holding my tooth. Are there any other spirits with you, Abel? If there's anyone else, please make the flame flicker. I 
hearing those noises again when you ask those questions. It's weird. I'm breathing to the side because I don't want it to flip on its own. Um, doesn't appear there's anybody with Abel. Abel Richardson, so you are here alone. Confirm that you were here alone by making the flame flicker one more time. Huh. He's here. Wow. He's definitely here. Um, what I'd like to do right now is a few EVPs. Let's see if we can get him to communicate with us that way. You know, at first I didn't really feel the energy, but now I do. Abel Richardson, please make a sound. I'm calling the spirit of Abel Richardson. Was that you that just made the noise? You're hearing that? Yeah, do, I am. Do you think we, we, we got that on camera? I'm, I'm, I'm playing the EVP back. Let's look at it. Those were the same kinds of noises I heard with the candle test. There's no one here with us, right? I really don't. Yeah. I doubt it. All right. Wow. That's No, there creepy. isn't. All right. There isn't. Abel Richardson. Please make a sound. You can hear it on here, too. I'm calling the spirit of Abel Richardson. Was that you that just made the noise? Yep. Yeah, Are again. That? Do you think That's we, it. We, we got that on camera? That was it again. Let's get out. Let's get out there. All right, come on. Let's go. What would make that noise? I mean, seriously, what would make that noise? It Nothing sounds like it's in this room now, though. It's in here now? It honestly sounded like when we... I don't believe it. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Did you see that shadow move? I think so, yeah. I was looking the other direction. I didn't see anything. Well, could you... You can't roll back that tape while we're filming, can we? I thought not I saw... As, not as we're shadow. filming, no. Not as we're filming. I'm hearing, I'm hearing noises again here. That's just not cars going by. That's just not do cars. something in this room here. It seems like this room is active. This is real active in here. Let me do an EVP in here, okay? Okay. One more EVP. All right. To the spirit that is making the noise, what is your name? There it is again. They're communicating with knocks. Can you knock one more time? I heard something here, and then I, I heard too. something down over there. Listen. You know what, I'm going to show, the reason I'm shutting it I mean, it's coming from all over, though. I'm shutting just... it off, but what I want you to hear is right in the beginning of this, there's like mumbling. Listen. To the spirit that is hmm. making the noise, what is your name? There it is, the whispering. I heard it. There it is again. It's whispering. I didn't hear that whispering with my, I did not hear that whispering with my ears, but I, but I heard it on the recorder. 
All right, you know what? Why don't we just get real still? Abel Richardson, I'm calling you. Come out. Come out, Abel. We know you're here. We can hear you. You're hearing the knocking again. I, I can't hear it so loud this time. No, it's quieter. Are you leaving us? Oh, this is really weird. This started off to be a paranormal short, and now we're like in a full-fledged mode of, of hunting. Abel. Abel, please come forward. I'm hearing sudding. Every now and again I do from a different area, though. It's like from all over the place, pronounced and then quiet. Uh, well, I almost hear like footsteps. Yeah, me too. I'm, th I'm thinking if if we're going to be filming uh, much longer, I've I got to swap around this battery that's in here before it completely cracks. It's going crap. dead? It's going dead. You know what? Why don't we do this? This is going to be a short investigation. I think what we might have to do with this particular church is bring an entire team in here, wire it for sound with surveillance cameras, and, um, and do a different type of program. But for now, we get a hell of a lot of evidence. And yeah, I said the word hell in a church. This place is rocking. There, th there's a noise again. This time it's coming up from the upstairs. Exactly. Whoa. Hmm. Right. Bye-bye. Ghosts and Legends of the Merrimack Valley. In bookstores now, hunt yourself down a copy or go to historypress.net. And now it's time to review the evidence. The first bit of evidence was taken during the daytime. It was an EVP. I've saved this clip. I'm going to replay it for you. I want you to hear it in sequence so you can understand it thoroughly. What I'd like to do at this time, in broad daylight, something I did just the other day. I did an EVP here in the church and I asked for a response. What I got was a sneeze. Let me play that for you right now. They're very, uh, the ones that we count were like Christmas. Yes. Okay, it was also cold. Right. They're very, uh, the ones that we count were like Christmas. Yes. Okay, it was also cold. Right. They're very, uh, the ones that we count were like Christmas. Yes. Okay, it was also cold. Right. Now, this EVP was groundbreaking. What I did was a paranormal experiment of sorts. I sang a hymn in church and stopped short to see if the spirits would continue on with the song. You're going to be amazed at what happened. Take a listen to this. Amazing grace, how sweet the to heal a wretch like something but I don't know if it's like the, the like the vibrations of like the uh, echoing in here or something so uh, I'm gonna play it back one more time and this time I will crank the volume up 
and we'll see what we hear. These next pieces of evidence are from a ghost box session I did in the attic. You can clearly hear me asking a question and the spirit's response. Not always can we grasp the response when we hear it in live time, but when you go back and you replay it and you watch it with your video, um, you can clearly see there were other answers on there. So these bits of evidence are exactly what you see on the tape that I may not have captured. And, and honestly, if you hear or see anything else in any of my programming, CC the Hunters at yahoo.com and let me know. Are there any spirits here? Are there any spirits here? Are there any spirits here? I'm asking the spirits again, how many of them are there in the attic? Now I got a different response. Listen to this. How many spirits are here today? How many spirits are here today? How many spirits are here today? Now with this question, I got two separate responses. This was so cool. Do you have something you want to tell me? Oh, like I said, not today. I thought I heard not today as well. And here is another astonishing Class A EVP from the Ghost Box session. Abel Richardson, can you please say something? Heard later. I heard late or later. Abel Richardson, can you please say something? Heard later. I heard late or later. Abel Richardson, can you please say something? Heard later. I heard late or later. Now this class A EVP from our ghost box session was incredible because the spirit was talking in third person. Listen to this. Do you want to talk to me later? He does. He does. Do you want to talk to me later? He does. He does. Do you want to talk to me later? He does. He does. It appears the spirit, when I asked a direct question, gave me a direct response, but he has an intellect because I asked him what my name was. And his response was, tell me your name. Listen to this. Can you say my name? That's how it Questions? Now this is truly amazing. It's called a candle test. And I ask the spirits a question and have the candle respond by like flickering or the flame moving sideways. Well, take a look at what happened when I asked a question. Abel Richardson, are you here? If you are, please pass your energy in front of this candle and make it flicker. And here is another great example of our candle test with the spirits making the candle flicker on command. 
Eagle Richardson, so you are here alone. Confirm that you are here alone by making the flame flicker one more time. Huh. 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 Please look closely at this next piece of evidence. I left it in its entirety, and then I split it up so you can watch it again. What I captured was extraordinary. It was a full-bodied apparition leaving the room. The funny thing was that the camera at that point just went blurry, but you still can see, if you study it, the spirit leaving the room. That was it again. Let's get out, let's get out there. All right, come on. Let's go. What would make that noise? I mean, seriously, what would make that noise? It Nothing sounds like it's in this room now, though. It's in here now? It honestly sounded like when we... I don't believe it. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Did you see that shadow move? Now, I've slowed the piece by 25% for you to be able to take a look at this. If you can click through it frame by frame, I suggest you do that as well. This is extraordinary groundbreaking footage. You can actually see the spirit leaving the room. And here it is. We I don't believe it. Oh my god. We I don't believe it. Oh my god. We I don't believe it. Oh my god. Now this EVP is very interesting. You can not only hear the sounds on command with your ears, but you can hear them on the recorder as well. Sometimes they call this a disembodied voice or a disembodied noise from a spirit, but take a listen to these. Abel Richardson, please make a sound. I'm calling the spirit of Abel Richardson. Was that you that just made the noise? You're hearing that? Yeah, do, I am. Do you think we, we, we got that on camera? I'm, I'm, I'm playing the EVP back. Let's look at it. Those were the same kinds of noises I heard with the candle test. There's no one here with us, right? I really don't. I doubt it. All right. Wow. That's No, there creepy. isn't. All right. There isn't. You can hear it on here, too. I'm calling the spirit of Abel Richardson. Was that you that just made the noise? Yep. Yeah, I that. Do you think That's we, it? We, we got that on camera? Abel Richardson. Please make a sound. I'm calling the spirit of Abel Richardson. Was that you that just made the noise? You're hearing that. Yeah, do, I am. Do you think we, we, we got that on camera? I'm, I'm, I'm playing the EVP back. Let's look at it. Those were the same kinds of noises I heard with the candle test. There's no one here with us, right? I really don't I doubt it. All right. Wow. That's No, there creepy. isn't. All right. There isn't. You can hear it on here, too. I'm calling the spirit of Abel Richardson. Was that you that just made the noise? Yep. Yeah, I that. Do you think That's we, it. We, we got that on camera? I honestly believe they're trying to communicate to us by knocking on things on command, mind you. And another thing, there was no one in this building except for the videographer and myself. Here's another EVP. To the spirit that is making the noise. What is your name? 
There it is again. They're communicating with Nock. To the spirit that is making the noise. What is your name? There it is again. They're communicating with Nox. And again, the spirit is communicating with Nox. Listen to these two separate Nox. Can you knock one more time? I heard something here, and then I, I heard too. something down over there. Listen. The spirit that is making the noise. What is your name? Did I forget? I death. Yep. They're communicating with knocks. Can you knock one more time? Can you knock one more time? I heard something here. And then I, I heard too. something down over there. Listen. To the spirit that is making the noise. What is your name? Did it again? I death. Yep. They're communicating with Knox. Can you knock one more time? Now this is the same EVP and after listening to it again, I realized I was hearing whispering on my recorder. Take a listen to this. To the spirit that is making the noise. What is your name? There it is, the whispering. There it is again. It's whisper. I didn't hear that whispering with my, I did not hear that whispering with my ears, but I, but I heard it on the recorder. That is making the noise. What is your name? There it is, the whispering. There it is again. It's whisper. I didn't hear that whispering with my. I did not hear that whispering with my ears, but I, but I heard it on the recorder. Now we are hearing thuds and footsteps coming from all areas of the church. Bob and I, my videographer, were hearing these from all the different sections. It was just wild. Abel, Abel, please come forward. I'm hearing thudding. Every now and again I do from a different area though. It's like from all over the place, pronounced and then quiet. Uh -oh. I almost hear like footsteps. Yeah, me too. This EVP was captured on the audio of the video camera during playback. When my videographer Bob swung the camera to look in the direction of where we were hearing these noises, you can hear a distinct, whoa, uh, that's not his voice. Um, that was clearly exciting. There, there it is again. This time it's coming up from the upstairs. Yeah, exactly. Hi, this is Cece the Hunches. I'd like you to take the next few minutes to watch this unbelievable clip of PAC's deaf investigators. We're at the Deep River Library. I interviewed them and we did a brief investigation. Then we came back and did a full-fledged investigation with the deaf investigators.
and signed by Laura Cartwright. A special thank you to Laura Cartwright for uh, allowing me to come in and interview to the deaf investigators and for her wonderful signing ability and for the television show that will follow this on another date. Enjoy. I'm delighted to present to you from Deep River, Connecticut, from the Deep River Library, we're doing a fundraiser here tonight, the Paranormal Association of Central Connecticut's Deaf League. Now these are deaf investigators that investigate the paranormal. And I want to interview them. We have Laura Cartwright here, and she's our signer, and she's going to be speaking to them for me. First off, I want to know, what is the best tool you use to do an investigation with? Well, for me, it's best to investigate with the cameras, I think. The cameras are the best. Um, I smell things on the medium, and, you know, I, I, I can't hear it, so, you know, the cameras, I can talk, but the cameras are, are, are the best. Bait. Oh, bait. So, so you're setting them up, you mean? Okay. I'm the only one that goes out. So. And, and, and I think for that you? That tool for me would be to use uh, the K2 meter. Um, okay. It allowed me to ask questions and then ask me to respond and using common knowledge, you know, common sense. Now, do you also use your other senses? I mean, uh, besides uh, the hearing uh, loss, do you use your, do your other senses compensate? for that during a paranormal investigation, and how? Yes, right. Oh, yes, sorry. Right. As for me, I can feel it. I can feel the presence. Okay, me too. Me too. <laughs> so, all the time, it's, it's getting higher and higher. So, now, I, if I go into a room or a place and I see something, I see shadows, it's... it's I can communicate with like through my through my own senses, my eye, and check to see if they're here. I'll use it straightforward and, and not um, use the equipment. You know, using equipment, using your mind. Okay. Yes. For for now, I will use the equipment because it, you know it's here. I'm eager to learn and separate from the medium to use the equipment. Okay. Um, do you like to debunk? Ask her, does she like to debunk the evidence? Um, some, sometimes I like to debunk, sometimes not, and it depends. Um, but during the uh, panel investigation, um, debunking is very important, so we know whether uh, um, it comes from the element or it comes from something else. Sure. And, and how do you do your paranormal investigations? What's your best tool? Um, my best tool is that I... I can feel things. I, I feel kind of creepy. Okay. And I can, right now I have cochlear implant and I can hear certain things that some people can't hear. Wow. Well, that's um, a tool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, and plus I'm kind of new, so. Yeah. Yeah. So have any of you seen a ghost or a spirit? Mm -hmm. I've seen them. Well, all my life I've grown up. I've seen them as well. It was really creepy. It was. It was. It was like a stack, and he went up me. Stick. A stick. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you very much for uh, participating in this interview, and tonight. We're going to be here at the fundraiser at the Deep uh, River Library in Deep River, Connecticut, and we're going to show you video footage of them actively hunting for the paranormal. This is CC the Huntress. Bye bye. It's too wide. We're here. It's very curious. Does not answering me? Does I'm saying do you want to communicate, and he won't answer me. Okay. Does he? Go ahead. And all right. I, I'll sign for myself. That's oh, I see. Okay. I just, I just popped up. Uh, you see me? Yes. I can't sign. She's got her eyes closed. 
I was just trying to ask. He, he's, he's not cooperating. Oh, he's not related to the little boy. He's oh. not related to the little boy. Does he know some love? Mr. Spencer? Spencer. Lots of little kids. Six. Sixteen. They're running around. There's one boy sitting outside. We're right here. I could follow him when I walked by. So maybe if you change his place, yeah. Change place. Yeah. Okay. Because then late, later you're going to go downstairs. So yeah, you're running out of any time to. Okay. Yeah, we can go downstairs then. Did you have one in there? Yes. She's from some kind of something. Yeah, those from here. Like, she was sad with it. Yeah. So, I'd say she's probably about maybe maybe 21, if that. I mean, she's, she's pretty young. That's, but I see she's got that funny color to her face. Oh, so she's not from here? No, she's from, I, okay. I want to say the Caribbean or like Jamaica, something like that. I'm not really sure. Now, sometimes they'll use energy and cross the energy over. Okay. Now, you come back now and talk to us. I know you're here because I can feel you behind me. Come closer. Are you a little boy? Are you the woman that lived in that room? Are you getting any? Hmm. You're getting little ones. You need to bring that number all the way up to nine. Keep trying. I feel the cool the gone off. It's just no, no, it's getting cold. I can feel it. It was hot, hot, hot up here. Come closer. Okay, you're just chicken. All these people make you scared? Let's see if we bring it this way towards the back of it because it feels like they're behind me. It feels like the breeze is coming from yeah, it's like, way. okay, I'm going to go find you because you're really annoying me now. I'm sorry, I don't taunt usually, but... Can you make our lights light up? We have a K2 meter here.
Don't whisper, just say that loud. Don't be afraid to do that. Because she, she asked what the spirits knew what it was. Oh, no, maybe not. So I really wanted to know if they were thirsty because I have some water. Okay. Maybe they can knock a book off a shelf that they can hear and feel that. And see it, yeah. All I hear is people walking upstairs. <laughs> <laughs>